Today we're, today we're going to begin our study of chemical equilibrium. Well, first of all, to have equilibrium, you have to have, have what is called a reversible reaction. In theory, every reaction can continue in two, in two directions, both forward and reverse. A chemical reaction is a chemical reaction which the products can go back and reform the reactants. Here's an example. Let's say we have mercury 2 oxide. It decomposes when it's heated, and it produces liquid mercury and oxygen gas. Now, so mercury and oxygen can recombine to form mercury 2 oxide when they're heated gently. So, you have the reverse reaction can go in forward and form the reactant. So we start with the mercury 2 oxide. This is also would be a reversible reaction. Equilibrium is referred to as dynamic. It's two reactions going on at the same time. The reactants forming the products and the products forming the reactants. If you look at equilibrium, there's no net change in the composition of the system, and we'll explain why in a little bit. The definition of chemical equil equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And when this occurs, the concentrations of the reactants and products remain unchanged. They're not equal, but they're going to be constant. For equilibrium reactions, we're going to use double arrows, meaning the reactants can form the products, but the products can also go back and reform the reactants. Here's an example. Let's think about not only reaction, but also physical changes. We know evaporation is when a liquid goes to gas, and condensation is when a gas goes to liquid. But these two processes can occur at the same time and occur in equilibrium. Let's see how this occurs. So let's say we put a liquid in a flask and we cl and close it. What happens here is evaporation begins to occur. The up arrow, re arrow represents evaporation. And the particles in the air would represent gas, or we could say they're water vapor. Evaporation continues and continues. Then at some point, there are a number of gas particles that are in the vapor phase. The water is now in the vapor phase. Now at this point, what can happen, the vapor phase can go and reform the liquid. As we see here, that would represent condensation. When these two processes are occur at equal rates, when the rate of evaporation, liquid to gas, and condensation, gas to liquid, are equal, we would say the system is at equilibrium. We say it's dynamic because as the reactants are forming the products, the products are at the same form, time forming the reactants. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have the same amounts, but the rates have to be equal. Let's look at another example. Here's actually a reaction instead of a physical change. In this reaction, we have water vapor reacting with carbon monoxide gas in a one-to-one -one ratio to form hydrogen gas and water vapor. Let's look at these two. Uh, the, this is a reaction system in four different situations or four different points in time. Here we see the first time, we can see, see this is uh, T1, so we could call this T1 right here. At T1, the reactants and are only present. There's water vapor and there's carbon monoxide. So this is obviously not at equilibrium, but these reactants are forming the products. Then we see it reaches a state where the reactants have decreased, and we actually have some products here. Now notice the amounts are still changing. Then if we go to, to time 3, we'll say this is time 3 right here. At time 3, we have the amount of reactants at 2, and we could represent that as 2 molar or 2 moles per liter, and the concentration of the products at 5. If we look at T4, Notice those amounts have not changed. This would indicate the system has reached equilibrium because the amounts of the reactants and the amounts of the products are constant. Notice they are not equal. Notice the products are at a bigger amount than the reactants, but the amounts are constant. So that would indicate that the system has, has reached equilibrium. Let's look at a little, this reaction a little bit more. Another way to look at that is when you ha start a reaction, the forward rate continues, but it, it's, a, it's the fastest when it starts. So the light blue arrow here would represent the forward rate, and the arrow right here at the bottom would represent the reverse rate. The forward rate decreases and the reverse rate increases, but at some point they meet, and when those two reactions are going at equal rates, and the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse, we say the system is at equilibrium. And this could be true of the reaction we talked about a while ago, when the water and carbon monoxide is, for, is reacting in the forward rate, and that rate is exactly equal to the rate at which hydrogen and carbon dioxide react to form, to form the products, or the reactants again, we would say that the reaction is at equilibrium. 
And this could occur for other reactions. Here we see nitrogen dioxide. This is actually a reddish brown gas that we see here. And then the gas N2O4 is actually colorless. So when we will actually look at this in the lab. But you see these two gases are one reacts and forms the products and the reactants. And this rate could be changed depending on the conditions. For example, if it's at zero degrees Celsius, it's going to be a very light brown. At 25 degrees Celsius, it's a little bit darker. And at 100, at 100 degrees Celsius, it changes. So this brings to, to mind the point that equilibrium is dependent on temperature. So if you change the temperature, you can shift the equilibrium that you have more products or more reactants. One thing that we're going to do to express this or to explain the equilibrium and if we have more products or reactants is the equilibrium expression. And so let's say we have two substances, A and B, and the reactant form two products, C and D. And so we'd write the, write the reaction like this, A and B reform, form C and D. Instead of balancing it with numbers, we're going to say the coefficients are N, M, X, and Y. And so to write an equilibrium expression for this, what we would do is we would write what we call the equilibrium constant, or K. The following equation describes the equilibrium constant, or it's a theoretical equilibrium system. When we do this, we're going to say brackets, that will mean concentration. And concentration, remember, we express in moles per liter. The way we'd write this is we would put the reactants on the, the bottom of the reaction. So this would represent our reactants. And so at the bottom, we have our reactants. And at the top of the reaction, or the top of the, of the mathematical formula, we have our products. We said A and B form C and D. So it's always products over reactants. And what you do is you put the coefficients will be your exponent. So whatever number you have in front of your C, it will be raised to that exponent. And whatever number you have in front of the D, it will be raised to that exponent. And when you divide and multiply everything out, we solve for what we call K, or the equilibrium constant. If we have a big K, that means we have a lot of products at equilibrium. If we have a very small K, which means less than one, we have a lot of reactants. We're just going to use the number one to denote the difference between large and small for the situation. Let's look at the equilibrium constant expression a little bit closer. A couple things about it. Remember, the products are always going to be in the numerator. And the reactants will always be in the denominator. This is for any expression that we write. Remember, C and D are the products of the reaction. Remember, A and B were the reactants of the reaction. And then the other thing we're going to note is that the coefficients become exponents when we write this expression. And another thing, remember I showed you the reaction with the brown and the uh, brown gas that could be clear. It changes with temperature, but it's independent of the, initial, of the original concentrations. But K is dependent on temperature. So if you change a temperature, it can shift in either direction. So in many of these problems, they'll give you the temperature, but you don't actually need to use it to solve the problem. It's just going to be the conditions for which it, it will occur at that temperature. To, uh, do a couple problems. Only concentrations of substances that can actually change are included when we calculate K. This means pure solids and liquids are left out because their concentrations or amounts don't change. But they, if they need to be present solids and liquids in order for the reaction to occur. So to summarize that, aqueous things would be included in equilibrium expressions. Gaseous substances would be included in equilibrium expressions. Solids would not be included in equilibrium expressions. And liquids would not be included in equilibrium expressions. The chemical equilibrium expression is a mathematical ratio of the products divided to the, by the reactants raised to the coefficient that we see in the balanced equation. The chemical equilibrium expression is the equation for K. For example, if I wanted to write a K expression for this reaction, hydrogen gas plus iodine, ga iodine as a gas forms two hydrogen iodines as a gas. Remember, we put the products at, and the uh, numerator so we put the products, which is hydrogen iodide, and we raise that to the second power because there's a coefficient of 2 in front of that. And we put the reactants, which are the hydrogen and the iodine, 
in the denominator. So we there we have concentration of hydrogen, and this would be times the concentration of iodine. Remember, brackets mean concentration. And if you're given these numbers, you simply insert those and solve for your K value. This is a chemical equation that we can write when, we, when we're asked to write a chemical equilibrium expression. Let's do one sample problem here. And a chemical equilibrium mixture consists of nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and nitrogen monoxide gas. Since they're all gases, we know they're going to be included in the equilibrium expression. And we're going to say these are at 1500 K. Now, the, the temperature is going to be given, but we don't have to use this to solve the problem. Now, we know the concentrations of each one of these in moles per liter. liter. The nitrogen is 6.4 times 10 to the minus, th minus 3. The oxygen is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. And the nitrogen monoxide is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5. What is the con equilibrium constant for this system at this temperature? So to solve this problem, first you may want to write down each one of the concentrations. The nitrogen is 6.4 times 10 to the minus 3. The concentration of the oxygen is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. And the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5. The unknown that we're trying to solve for is K. So the first thing you want to do is write it can uh, use a balanced equation, so you want to make sure you have a written balanced equation. The other thing you want to note is make sure the substances would be included in, in the equilibrium expression. These are all gases, so they would be included in the equilibrium expression. The chemical equilibrium expression for this would be products over reactants. It would be K is equal to the concentration of nitrogen, nitrogen monoxide squared because we have a coefficient of 2 in front of the nitrogen monoxide divided by the concentration of nitrogen times the concentration of oxygen. Now we simply need to insert the numbers. So the first thing is to write the, have the reaction that's balanced next with the states. The next thing is to write the K expression. And the third thing is to insert the numbers. And then the last thing we want to solve for that. What we want to do is insert all the numbers. So we'll do that. So we say K is equal to and we'll put 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter squared. That would be the nitrogen oxide. And then at the bottom we'd say 6.4 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. And when you compute all this, notice the moles per liter cancel out. And the final value for K would be 1.1 times 10 to the minus 5. This number is relatively small, so we'd say the K includes a large amount of reactants. Anytime, remember, anytime the K is less than 1, anytime the K is less than 1, we'd say includes a lot of reactants. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.